Hello, hello, my beloveds. I am so excited and ecstatic and blissful to be here with you today because I have some really incredible news. So um, I need to take a breath and settle down so I can talk. <laughs> so I knew we were going to start the Angel Reader course on November 3rd. For the angel reader certification because we've got a bunch of people who are just kind of spinning around in a circle and we need to get them moving forward and it's taken me a while to to um feel the energy to receive the energy to do live classes again because it's a big deal to do these live classes <laughs> and so i've been fussing about rena and eugenia and chakra wanda and Frida, those four of you, you know, you've been, I've been feeling you pulling at my soul to say, hey, hey, what about me? What about me? I want to finish. I want to get ordained. So, so Rena, are you ready to be ordained in, in France in the spring? I am. <laughs> I am. So I, I have to work out the calendar, but Rena, your section is going to be starting on November 10, which is my birthday. And I can't imagine doing anything more closer to my heart that I would love more than to get your class regoing, Rena. Oh, great. Wonderful. So as soon as I have more information about that, I will be sharing it with you so you can plan on it and get, it, get it into your schedule. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, great and you see that little angel flopping out in and out yeah there's one on each side there's, there's one here. over here too there he is <laughs> <laughs> one of our angel ministers brought two of those to me when she was ordained and I, I think that it was Reverend Tina does anybody remember Tina I think that's who did that um Anyway, if, if I'm wrong, please, please remind me who brought them because uh, silly me, I didn't put a note on them who, who brought them. It's been been a while now, but I enjoy them every day They're They've got they've got my back. They're on my shoulder. <laughs> so oh, so I'm going to take a breath and settle down now and we're going to do something a little different than what we usually do. Usually I share with you on these um, monthly circles i share with you the latest of what i'm working on and what i'm receiving in my own prayer and meditation and usually that comes in the form of i'm asking questions and i'm getting answers and the answers usually come in a in a form i write them in my journal and they usually come in a form that is um is it's um, um an activation a meditation activation so so this is my journal, my new one I'm working on. I love these colors. I love the musician. It's got stars. I love heavenly stars and things. It's got a spiral on the back. And so this is this is what these messages whoops, look like in my journal, where I'll ask a question. This one was back in March. I'll reveal the vision that you hold for me this day simple question and then I got this amazing um, message from spirit that goes on and on for a couple of pages on and on yeah it's a five page message and there's oh, new questions at the end new questions what can I do now today who can help with the parts that are not for me how can I adjust to do things differently so apparently I was given some walking papers in that one <laughs> So, so this is this is how I do my meditation, and so our topic today was, um, you know, back to our angel healer summit, and our angel mystic lifestyle. To just take a little greater care, um, and a little more personal attention on how do I know I'm an angel mystic? What is a mystic? And um, you know, I put some nice questions into our email today. 
Am I an angel mystic? What are my mystical or inner skills? We're going to focus on that today because they change over time. Mm -hmm. And I like to call these our angel superpowers. And the other way you could think of that is, how do I experience or perceive the divine? And my favorite last one is, I'm working on this right now, so this is fresh in my life. What elements do I need in my daily life to nourish and expand my soul experience. So I'm my life is all about bringing more and more of my holy self, my Christ self, my essential self or true self, or by whatever name most resonates in your heart and your soul, bringing that to be more a part of my everyday life so that I'm living less and less from my Kimberly personality and more and more from my holy self being. How does that feel? <sighs> Is that something that you are working on in your hearts and your souls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I'm going to share with you, yes, yes, I'm going to share with you how I work on this personally, and we're going to just actually do it together today. And along the way, I would love for you to share with us what you do. So the first thing that I do in the morning is I get up and I do some kind of a connection meditation. In the Angel Healer Summit, we've been using the rosary to do that connection meditation. And I managed to get Declan live this morning. So I did the rosary with him. It was just very yeah. sweet. I love it because he she does it he does a annotated version you know where he shares with us his insights along the way which was really sweet I like to, I do that too I can't help myself I can't just read it I have to blurt out what's in my heart and what I'm feeling along the way so we're gonna do a, a a short meditation and prayer and then the next thing I do is I have my journal so I hope that you have your journal or a paper and a pen or something to write with. Because for me, the way it works best is if in that open space, I ask a question and then I'm open to receive the answer. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel the energy come in. I'm explaining this to you so you can see how it works for you. Mm -hmm. I ask my question. I feel the energy coming in. And then I, I start to have, I start to hear like an inner dialogue. So it's, it's very subtle. It's like I'm talking to myself, mm -hmm. but not. It's not, yeah, Arena's got, yeah, but it's not me talking to myself. And for about 10 years, the angels have been saying the same thing, which is kind of like the, the hello, it's the greeting, and they say, we are here. So sometimes when I hear that, I think I'm just making it up. And <laughs> if, if my thought is I'm just making it up, then I hear, we're here. <laughs> We are here. <laughs> and and it's so uh, so I write and that's kind of how the dialogue works for me. So I write exactly what I'm hearing. So we are here and and I'll write my am I imagining? I'll write that. <laughs> and then we are here. I'll write that. And that opens the flow of the message that's going to come through for me. And so I've learned to just write whatever it is I'm, I'm imagining or that I'm hearing or whatever it is I'm hearing, I just start to write it. And I'm always in awe over the beauty and the wisdom that pours through like that. Does anybody else have this experience? Who else interacts like this? Eva's nodding her head, Rena. Yeah, let's see, I can't see everybody all at once here. For a long time, I didn't know, you know, I was doing the same thing. Is it me? Am I making that up? Or is it them? And having to just, you know, develop the discernment, which only came over a long time. Of, yes. You know, finally. Yeah. So now I don't, I don't say that so much anymore. I mean, I noticed that that's kind of weaned away and it's, it's more clear now mm -hmm. that it's actually them and not me. Cause I can get out of the way now. I didn't know how to get out of the way before. <laughs> And in our rosary, I love the rosary because it really instructs us. Mm -hmm. and in the fourth, in the third decade, it says, trust the answers, do not judge them. <laughs> third yeah. decade, bead five, 
Trust the answers, do not judge them. Right. And another thing, thank you for that, Jana Marie. Another thing I love in here is ask, then trust, let go of what you think you should be seeing and doing and manifesting. Yeah. So getting back to that, Jana Marie, that's bead number eight in the third decade, give. I had a lot of trouble with thinking I uh, thinking I knew what I should be seeing and doing and manifesting. And right. um, and this rosary helped me to let go of that and to be open to what it is. And so because of this rosary, when, you know, just uh, four or five, five or six weeks ago, I received in my meditation, Start the Angel Healer Summit, uh, inst after I said, holy fuck, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after that, I said, okay, 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 I can do that. I can do that. Uh, trying to think I didn't open this up, but um, let's see. Anyway, I'm not going to try to find the entry because I didn't get it to get it for you before, but um, yeah, it was somewhere around late August. Or um, late, or no, it was it was in early, early August, I think. Yeah, it was after the Lion's Gate, after August 9th, I know that much. <laughs> and and so so my my morning meditations are really important because that's when this really that's when I'm most open to receive the most important guidance from spirit. And it's in this inner dialogue that. The magic really happens. Oh, Erica's here. Wonderful. So that is called contemplative meditation. I bet you knew that. Contemplative meditation. It's when we contemplate something in a meditative state. So um, in my earlier spiritual path, I did a lot of contemplative meditation with quotes, with scripture. And um, one of the things we're going to talk about a little bit here is what elements do you need in your life as a mystic? And one of those elements that I really encourage is creativity and play. Because when I'm not playing, when I'm not feeling creative, I'm not so open to receive the playful energies of spirit. And so one of the things that I like to do is um, crafty paper stuff. And I discovered junk journaling. I'm not going to show you my junk journal today. But I part of junk journaling I learned to do is create what they call tags. And I use these tags for um, quotes. So this one happens to be from Jeshua. And I happen to have it in my journal. And it says, when you claim all of your power, you come from a place of the power of love, which sees everyone in evenness, in equality, with honor and respect. There is no need to have power over another one, or to change another one, or even to be in judgment over another one, when you claim your true power. Mm -hmm. So that's one that I'm working on. Because I often find myself when my when my um, Kimberly personality brain is looking at the world, the Kimberly personality brain sees through a filter of judgment. And when I can catch myself in that filter of judgment and say, oh, hey, look at you, and take a breath and say, what if I could see through Christ's eyes? What if I could see through the eyes of spirit or the eyes of love, whatever words work for you? How would this person look through eyes of love? We would, I would see only the precious, beautiful soul of that being and the love that lives in their hearts that they may, maybe they're not expressing it in the moment, but that love of their soul that is there. And then I can see that love and I can see them from a different perspective. So that's one of the examples of contemplative meditation where I like to make these pretty things to keep them around me and to keep them in my consciousness. You know, I have others on, on stickies here. I can have this sticky here. Uh, well, you can't see that. It says, God is you. 
And I have another one that says, choose lightheartedness. And another one that says, choose to ascend in every moment. And um, I've got them all over here. Uh, oh, well, here, they're all poking out. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> all poking out here. <laughs> With other things stuck on. Oh, play. This one says play on the back, and you can't see that. Play. <laughs> so, so I have these little moments of contemplative meditation where when I'm in between things or if I'm feeling a little stressed, this is part of my mystic's lifestyle. I have these little beautiful little treasures all around me, all over the place. So there's always, in a moment of need, there's always a little message of beauty and love and joy. So um, we'll get to that too. We'll get to that too. So that is contemplative meditation. Either contemplating in prayer, first you enter into either prayer or meditation or um, something like that. That's what I do in the morning. I will often listen to... Um, Sometimes I listen to my own guided meditations. <clears throat> Sometimes I listen to Eva. <laughs> Sometimes I listen to Jeshua. Uh, and I and I, I vary. I go through things. I've been enjoying uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza lately. And I love it where he says, sit up. <laughs> and it's got big reverb going. <laughs> and then close your eyes. And think, wow, I've never done meditation like that. <laughs> so, you know, you know. Reverb. I got to get the reverb going. <laughs> so there's here's more playfulness. Here's more changing it up. You know that helps me see some other things. Uh, there, let's see a few other people I've list I listen to occasionally that I like. So how about you? What do you like to start your day with? Uh, well, I will tell you that uh, when it comes to meditation, morning and night, Saxon Knight has the most beautiful um like the choir is there I, I mean it's like she's speaking and the choir's behind her her meditations and she has lots of um free ones on her website for the um seraphim school or academy or whatever she calls it it's soul s-o-u-l seraphim um yeah i can't remember yeah yeah uh, i mean you can just go to the website and download like four or five or six of them but she also will send you um a cd if you want to get the cd or mp3 or whatever uh, but i have uh, of all the ones i listen to um including you kimberly this woman is it, it's like the angels kind of when she speaks and that music comes on it's like the angels come it, they just like go and like show up. I mean, you can just feel this magic, the way that the music is and the way her voice is, it's just, it's her magic. You know, she's just got this magic. And I can't highly, enough highly recommend um, them. She has four that um, I just listen to off the website. I just have it on my phone. And so I can just go to it. And one is uh, inner strength, one is beauty, one is love, and one is, um, I forget what the other one is. And I just alternate between them every single day. Um, and that's what I start. I start with. And then the thing about the other day, you were talking about how you were asking the angels to show you, uh, show me what you want me to know, or like you're writing, you know, what do you want to, what do you want me to know now? And you, you write it out. Um, I start every day by saying, show me what you want me to see. And some days, uh, like I don't know, a couple of years ago, I wouldn't see something for a couple of days or hear something or get some kind of what I thought was magic. So I'd be like, well, where are you? What, what the hell's going on? And I realized, you know, I was moving so fast doing so many things, I must have missed it. You know, of course it had to, I must have missed it. So then I started adding, uh, show me what you want me to see today and make sure I'm not distracted when you're showing me. <laughs> oh, oh yes. So I'm going to write that down. Let's all write that down. <laughs> so now I've added that to my request is make sure I'm paying attention and I'm not distracted. <laughs> I love that. Um, and, and then I just let it and let it flow after that. You know, I just stay like in the allowing um, all day long of watching, waiting, and just mm -hmm. knowing that now that I've asked them to keep me aware when it comes, that I now I know I won't miss it. Yeah. So I don't know what kind of mind screw I'm doing with myself with that, but <laughs> oh, <beautiful. laughs> it works. It's like setting my clock, you know, ahead uh, 10 minutes. 
And my husband says, well, you know, it, you know it. And it's like, well, I do know it, but I don't really know it. I get up and later I find out I have 10 more minutes and I'm so excited when I find out I have 10 more minutes. I get in the car and I go, oh, oh, right, right. The clock. Yeah. So I forget that and it, it helps me. It makes me happy when I find out I have 10 minutes. He doesn't understand what's going on in here. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. The angel time. Angel time. <laughs> Any other favorite meditations or questions before we jump in? Mine in the morning is the meditation of gratitude. I start out with um, being grateful for everything that, you know, in, in my life and grateful for the day that's ahead of me and grateful that the angels are here and grateful. And so it's a little kind of meditation about different things that I'm so appreciative of. Lovely. Yeah, that's my nighttime. I go to sleep starting with <laughs> I love my sheets. I love my bed. I love, and I just keep <laughs> going I fall asleep. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Anyone else got a treasure for us? Well, I listen to Joshua. I listen to you. Um, I love your uh, Angel Raphael healing clinic. If there's healing yeah, that needs yeah. to um, then there's some really beautiful meditations, uh, Children of the Sun. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I've listened to those many years ago and I downloaded them into my files. And now they've got them where you can uh, actually purchase those meditations, but they're beautifully uh, done um, as well. And then sometimes if I want to uh, get uh, more energy, I'll listen to Abraham Hicks. <laughs> uh, you know the 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 energizing ranting uh uh prosperity possibilities um and cry on too uh he has some some really beautiful things to to say yes um, yes yes yeah he does um and and i found that uh as much as i like to write um i can write faster, get the messages faster if I'm typing. Uh, so I'll just put it, you know, in the computer because I can close my eyes and just type, you know, whatever's coming in, whereas it, I have to keep my eyes open when I'm writing. And then that kind of takes me out of that listening mode because I'm into the, you know, making sure I'm <laughs> stay on the page. And I'm not off somewhere. <laughs> So, uh, and the way I know that that it's not just my personality is that the next day I'll go back and read it and I just don't even remember that I wrote that and it'll be just like, wow. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's when I know it's, it's spirit talking and, and not just uh, my personality wanting to write it. But I love the uh, being able to write meditations, uh, you know, taking quotes and then uh, it's my conscious mind that's writing, but after a certain point, once I get into um, into a certain groove of it, uh, the things that come out aren't aren't something that I was thinking of doing. I might get a strict structure like the one I just did about the teacher within. I'll get I got this picture of a temple and a garden, and so I start with that and then see what where that flows. Um, and it's so amazing because I never said th th what kind of a temple or anything to uh, Miriam, and she just <laughs> picked the exact thing I was thinking of, and that's what's on this meditation that just got posted. So I was like, "All right, <laughs> spirit is working with us, whether we we know it or not." And you know, she's in Brazil, and and she's posting these, uh, putting on this beautiful music or composing the music, and putting these images and it's so magical. I feel so, so blessed to have this connection. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Oh, thank you, Eva. So we're gonna begin to have some actual <laughs> practice of contemplative meditation here and we're gonna do it the way I do it in my morning. So um, Johanna and Erica, the please feel uh, connected in with us. You know, the rest of us, we meet here all the time. We're, we're old friends. 
So you are also an old friend with us. Feel invited and connected with us and um, um, feel free to, to, share, um, to share with us. Uh, Johanna says, recently started reading scripture in the mornings and Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, yes. Yeah, whatever our soul is calling for is just so incredibly perfect. So now, let's begin with, uh, I want to start with a question. How do I experience or perceive the divine? Because it changes for us. And there's, there's probably the way it usually happens for you. <clears throat> but we're going to explore and see if maybe there aren't some other ways that you perceive the divine. So I love it because Eva just said she got this picture of this temple and this garden and everything came in and filled around for that. I'll often see a picture. And when I see a picture, it's like a, uh, just like a flash. It's really quick. It comes in and out. It's not like I'm seeing <clears throat> a movie or this big massive sweeping vision. It's, it's a, just a glimpse. And if I focus on it and hang out a little bit longer, it will come back into focus and I'll begin to feel more about it. And I'm saying feeling because I mean that literally. I'll begin to feel the energy of whatever this is. And I'll begin to, um, to receive knowing about it. I might see more detail. I might begin to hear. I might smell the flowers in the garden or smell the trees. I might smell the air in the garden. <clears throat> I might taste the fruit on the trees. Or maybe I'll uh, smell roses and I'll know that Mother Mary is nearby. Or maybe I'll, I'll see an image of sunflowers, which is sometimes how Mary Magdalene lets me know she's around. So let's begin with this question. What are my mystical or inner skills? How do I experience or perceive the divine? So let's start by closing our eyes and just taking a deep breath and relaxing. That's it. Just breathe into your heart and relax. And I like to put my hands over my heart because it makes it easier for me to focus on love. Love is the gateway that we go through into spirit. And as we breathe into our hearts, see if you can perceive that gateway. What does it look like for you? Is it a light? Is it a, a ball of light or a speck of light? Do you actually see a gateway since I mentioned a gate? Do you see a door? Maybe you just feel an openness or an expansiveness as you breathe into the love that's in your heart. Oh, maybe it starts with peacefulness. Oh, that's it. Peacefulness. I was jumping ahead there. Peacefulness. There it is. Oh, yes. Some peaceful. A peacefulness. As in, I lay me down beside still waters. My soul is restored. That kind of peacefulness. And as I breathe into that kind of peacefulness, feeling myself lying in these green pastures beside this beautiful, still, deep pool of water, I also begin to feel a sense of joy. So just notice what is it for you? A sweetness. A softness. And in that I feel my heart chakra expanding. Beautiful green, emerald green light like that green meadow that I'm lying in. 
That green light is radiating out so brightly with pink. There's a big, beautiful, sparkly pink heart in the middle of it for me right now. What is it for you? Whatever it is, it's perfect. As that love and joy expands, now I begin to see that twinkling light. It starts as just like a little twinkle. And when I breathe and give it my attention, it grows larger very quickly. It expands, becomes this beautiful presence of light. And just maybe that's my guardian angel. Could it be? Hmm, let's be curious. Hmm, is this my guardian angel here with me? Oh. I'm seeing Archangel Michael. So the way that happens for me is I see the Michael that's in my Angel Blessings cards, that picture, because that's easy for me to identify. But I also heard in my inner hearing, Michael. And I felt an influx of that power from Michael. My guardian angel feels very different. And Michael is here to open our circle of light. And he's escorting us into our circle of light. He's creating the template or the, 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 uh, it's geometry. I see it as geometry. He's creating the, the place for us, the temple. That's it. He's creating the temple for us to gather. And we're safe, we're protected because Michael has created the energy structure for this beautiful temple. And he stands guard at the door. So not only is it those of us who are here live on this call, but the others who have invited, who come to us through the replay, you are also admitted. Michael is smiling at you and letting you in. Can you see that? Do you feel that? Can you feel the presence of his power and protection for us? And as we enter in, just notice how does this temple look to you? So I am seeing white steps coming up to a beautiful, huge open door. So whatever it is for you, just focus in on that and enter this temple that Michael has created for us. The first thing that I see as I enter is um, the space feels circular. <clears throat> and I see a number of huge pillars like Grecian pillars or Roman pillars. Uh, they're not either, they are... Atlantean pillars. Who? okay. So we've brought in the energy of Atlantis into this beautiful sacred space. And as, as I tune into those pillars, the, the space is huge. And as I tune into the pillars, I see that there is an a immense being. It seems like they're standing next to the pillar, but the more I focus in, I recognize that they are the pillar. They are creating this sacred space for us to connect. And opposite Archangel Michael, as I look opposite Archangel Michael, for me, Archangel Michael is in the... Um, left behind me on the left and as I look forward to the far side on the right it is Raphael the angel of healing in that position so we greet Raphael with love and gratitude and that lets us know we've got some healing to happen today so we thank Raphael and we recognize that we are in a healing temple and now as I bring my gaze, my gaze comes to the middle of this 
room, this space, this temple. And I'm seeing a beautiful altar in the center. <clears throat> and there's a light, a shaft of light coming down from the heavens, illumining that altar. And for me, that altar is a, it's a table. <clears throat> and I'm going to describe it the best I can as like white marble. Something else, maybe I'll get the word, but I'm going to call it marble because that's the word that's in my mouth. And it is a beautiful, delicate, and at the same time, massively beautiful altar. It's exquisite. There is carving. There's just, just amazingly beautiful carving on this altar place. And in the center of it is a, a levitated bowl that has an eternal fire burning in it. And the color of the fire right now is a violet. So it's the violet flame, yeah. which lets us know that uh, St. Germain is most likely here. And let's see what form he is here in. Yes, he's in one of the he's on one of those pillars. I see him on one of those pillars and he he winks at us and and he touches his heart for us. And he's bringing us the grace of this beautiful violet flame on the altar. Ah, oh, the next thing I notice is the floor just illuminated. So the floor is this beautiful luminescent white. And as I'm feeling called to walk into the temple now with my bare feet, and under my bare feet it feels cool but not cold, warm but not hot. It's refreshing. And I feel with each step I take, I feel an energy rising up through the soles of my feet from this floor. It's feeding me with energy. And this energy is coming up through my feet, my ankles, calves, knees, thighs, up through my hips, up into my abdomen, my chest, out my arms, up my neck, into my head. And I'm seeing my crown illumine. And I see now that I have that beautiful halo like we see in sacred art, that beautiful golden halo. And I'm being reminded of my divine, holy Christ presence. And I feel us all, I see us all entering into this sacred place. So take a moment to recognize your experience. What do you see? What do you feel and know? What do you hear? I say, oh, there's a fragrance in the air. What is the fragrance that you smell? And as we enter, we're being guided to stand in a circle around this beautiful altar in the middle. We stand here with reverence, with gratitude for this most extraordinary gift. And I'm hearing all is well, beloved ones. If you notice, the most beautiful chair has been placed behind you. I think it just appeared. They weren't there and then they were. And relax now, sit into your chair and relax. Each of the chairs is unique for us. Notice the texture of the, of the seat. Notice how it feels to your fingers and to your body. How, how does it feel holding your body in this seat? 
Can you feel an energy exuding from this chair filling you? Oh, let's hang with this energy for a minute and just receive it because it is so ecstatic, exquisite. Oh, are you feeling a healing? It's definitely elevating our frequency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you receiving healing through this beautiful chair? Focus on this feeling of having your frequency elevated into the divine, to the angel and ascended master and God realm. It is here that our inner perceptions, our inner senses are awakened and refined and tuned. It's like tuning a piano. That as we work with the senses, we can bring them further and further into tune so that we have a much finer sense. <clears throat> a much finer sense of perception. And especially at these higher vibratory rates, our inner senses open up, our inner vision becomes much clearer. Are you noticing that you can see this space that we're in with much greater clarity than usual? <clears throat> So, so for me, instead of just a little flash of a glimpse, I'm now in this place. I'm here. I, I see it. I feel it. I am here. I know it. Is that happening for you? So my vision, my inner vision is far more acute and finely tuned where I can see the details. My sense, my senses, my... um sensations. I feel the pleasure of the energy. I feel the healing energy coming forth. I feel the enlivening energy coming from the floor up through my feet. I feel it in the atoms of my body. Are you feeling quickened like that? <clears throat> Likewise, my tactile senses in the chair, as I touch the chair, as I feel, uh, mine has a fabric, as I feel the fabric, it is um, woven. And yet it is so soft and luxurious. And sometimes it looks like a, a kind of like, it looks kind of like a, a homespun, dyed, dark green, um, like a cotton fabric but that's not how it feels it feels like um, like a silk satin it is so smooth to the touch and it actually emanates um, silver and gold so it's this funny layered experience and and it I Oh, it's so relaxing. I can relax back into the chair. It supports my whole body and my head. And my whole body can just relax into this chair and receive this healing energy that is being directed to us by Archangel Raphael. Mm. Thank you, thank you. As, as I feel my body open, I smell. I smell violets. And I see Saint Germain come forward into the circle. And as he gestures, he makes a gesture to each one of us. His beautiful violet flame 
leaps off the altar, a little flame of it leaps off the altar and into our hearts. So I'm feeling and I'm feeling that violet flame come into my heart and I'm watching that violet flame go into each of our hearts. And he has a message for each of us. So listen now for this message from Saint Germain for your heart. I'm hearing beloved one allow all pain and heartbreak to be released mm. allow love joy, ecstasy to fill your heart so that no residue of pain or heartache remain. Only unconditional, pure, divine love, joy, peace, ecstasy. Receive this gift so that your natural state in life so that your lived experience in life is now from love, joy, peace, and ecstasy. Mm -hmm. There is no need to carry pain forward another moment. <sighs> Float away with the breath of God's love. Allow your light body to awaken with this violet flame in your heart. Your light body has always been here. And now, invite it to infuse into your physical body so that you are living every moment of life in your sacred angel light body. Never again to be separate, to be one, to be united always, every moment for all eternity. This is the truth of your being. Feel this knowing in your body Breathe it in and declare it so. Say after me, it is so. And we give thanks for this blessed gift. In this wholeness, in this oneness, there is no need for pain. So if there is pain in your body, direct it now to leave your body and go to the violet flame on the altar and allow it to be transmuted into pure divine love. So from wherever that pain is, just imagine it going into that violet flame on the altar. And a beautiful vapor comes out of the violet flame on top and comes back to your body to fill the places that had pain, to fill them with love. Love is the answer to all challenges. And so see, feel, know 
the pure presence of divine love filling all of those spaces where there was pain before. Awakening the electrons, the protons, the neutrons, the cells, the space between, awakening them with the presence of pure divine love so that the very matter of your body is now composed of love. All of it, not just in the places that were in pain. And as love reframes your body, reforms the elements, the visceral elements of your body, the bones, the fluids, the tissues, the muscles, the organs, the glands, the brain, your eyes, your nerve endings, your blood, your lymph fluid. As love remakes your physical body, the tissues, the essence of your physical body, allow all old programs keeping you in sickness in injury and suffering, to be pulled and placed in that beautiful violet bowl on the altar to be transformed. All those old beliefs, those old memories, old habits that we have that carry varieties of pain forward, send it into that bowl. And as the mist emerges from the top, that pure divine love mist. Breathe it in, let it come into your blood, let it go into your brain, let it go into every cell of your body through the air. Oh, it feels so blissful. And can you feel your body healing, coming into alignment? Oh, there's another bit. Send that little bit out. You Call yourself, call it good, call it done. Thank it for its lesson. Acknowledge that you don't need any more from that lesson. Pull it and send it into that violet fire to be transmuted into pure divine love. Oh, and as that beautiful fragrance of love comes out of that violet fire, Breathe it in again so that that oxygen, the, that that essence in the oxygen actually penetrates into your physical body, in through your lungs, in through the transfer, the oxygen transfer, into your blood, being delivered to every cell, every organ, every bone and tissue and nail and hair and eyelash, <laughs> into every place where you've had injury and pain, allowing it to be completely restored to full health. And in your heart, express gratitude. Thank you for the fullness of this health. I fully accept it in. I receive full health. <clears throat> I receive energy, vital energy. I receive joy and ecstasy and enthusiasm. I receive health and strength and agility. I receive youth, eternal youth. And breathe and feel this blessing. <clears throat> Find the knowingness in your heart that this is real. It is true. You are truly experiencing a remake of your physical body, your healthy physical body, your energetic, youthful, vibrant, agile, strong physical body. And we thank you, Saint Germain and Archangel Gabriel. Mm, Archangel, I said Archangel Gabriel. Thank you, Archangel Raphael. Archangel Gabriel just came forward. 
Can you see Archangel Gabriel? How does he look to you? Or she, maybe it's Gabriella. How does this beautiful, blessed being of light look to you? Can you see colors? Can you see radiant energy? More important, what do you feel in your heart, in your body from this blessed one? I'm seeing, seeing this being settled in as Gabriella for me. And I'm seeing a beautiful, another more green, a different green, a beautiful green. What is that green? Oh, I can't even describe it. It's, it has so many different hues in it. It's alive and vibrant. And changing. Mm. The energy, though, is extraordinary. So Archangel Gabriel is offering to place into our hearts greater clarity about our soul purpose and life calling. So let's listen, be open to receive, and receive this gift of knowing, of feeling, of seeing, of sensing more about our life purpose and soul calling with gratitude. Keep going with it. Whatever it is for you, keep going. Open more. Receive more. And ask, what would you ask for? And know as you ask that it is done, it is received. Nothing is withheld from the precious Holy Self. Are you letting go of more? Send it into that beautiful violet fire to be transmuted into pure love and breathe the love in with gratitude. And we say thank you.
It is so. It is done. We are invited to stand and take hands, to hold hands around this beautiful circle of love, to feel the connection between us, to feel the bond of our holy angel family, to know that we have lived many lifetimes together, to feel the deep and profound love between us. In your inner vision, look at each of us now and recognize the holy being you see before you as your beloved friend, loved one. Feel the love between you and connect with each one of us in this way. And we receive a final blessing of love, of joy. And as we say thank you, oh. our final gift is that we're not leaving here. We stay here. And this temple is merging, it's infusing with our physical locations. So feel, see, witness this temple and merge into your home. In your office or wherever you are. So that your home becomes a part of this sacred temple. They are one. And see this temple extend out so it goes beyond your home. This temple covers miles and miles and miles around where you live, providing protection for you always. <clears throat> protection in your home, protection wherever you go, love, support, truth, health, joy wherever you are. You are now walking the earth as your holy Christ self, always in the world, but not of it, you are in the holy temple, connected in oneness. Oh, thank you for this powerful gift. It is done. And so we remain here in our energy body and just simply breathe now. Feel your toes, wiggle your toes and fingers. Feel yourself present and before you open your eyes, know that this temple, this holy temple, is infused and merged into your house so that you are always in the temple, always in your holy self. And if you forget, just remember. And when you're ready, take a few more breaths of this beautiful, sacred air that nourishes our body with such love and joy and health. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. And perhaps you want to write some notes.
I'm going to close our session now and I encourage you to take this time to write in your journal about everything you can remember that you saw and heard and felt in this experience. And I would love it if you send me an email about the highlights of your experience. Mm -hmm. I'm just buzzing and I want to record this precious moment. So I love you all so much. Thank you for being a part of this sacred circle of light. Mm. Mm. I love you. See you again soon. You. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Cherish this. Mm. Mm-hmm.